and her sisters told me that you could see in her eyes that, that there was something not there. But at any rate, uh, as of Sunday, she uh, took her own life because I think she was tired. And uh, she was the kind of person that uh, somebody has very aptly put it. She was like the fireman who runs into the burning building to save another life and doesn't regard anything about herself. So she has paid no. the price. And he's been in the trenches. No, not at all. As a matter of fact, we've talked about it quite a bit before and during, and we have reviewed the other members of the family and concluded that if we ever were trying to prognosticate about who would be solid, Lorna would have been the very last person to have uh, lost her equilibrium, so to speak. She had not one scintilla of any emotional or, or problem of, of stress or anything. She was a very outgoing person. She was a snowboarder. She played the cello in one of the orchestras in town. Uh, she volunteered at a nursing home. Uh, she was a salsa dancer. She just did everything. And everybody thought she was really neat, including me. Uh, but when she went, uh, she just ran out of steam completely. And like I say, I, in my mind, it's sort of like a horse trying to pull a heavy load. And she was beaten to the point where she went right down on her knees, right between the reins and with a bit in her mouth and died, and died from the trying to help. Uh, this virus affects a person's mind as well as their physical being, like their lungs, and that it is has worked on the brains of people who have been sick without us even identifying it to begin with. And uh, Lorna would be an example of somebody who is a poster child for proving that this virus is indeed working on people's minds and psychological equilibrium and really great, working great havoc. But this, this remains to come into the literature as time goes on. It hasn't really gotten prevalent right now. Mm -hmm.